So if you've been watching me for any length of time, you'll know this channel was born on takes aged like a bowl of refried sick, and this last week has really been no different. The 4th of June 2024 may well go down in Formula 1 history as the beginning of the end for Red Bull's dominance in the sport. It was a day that the team announced that they'd re-signed Sergio Perez not only for 2025, but for 2026 as well. Well, depending on who you believe, that may well still be a 1 plus 1 deal, with the cards firmly in Christian Horner's hands on that one, it's still baffling to me all the same. As I explained but a week ago, Sergio Perez has had yet another mixed start to the season with the Milton Keynes Bay squad. Now being honest, I really didn't need to explain that, the evidence has been fairly blatant for us all to see on track, but it helped fill some watch time, and as tempting as it is for me to do it again, I'm not going to get away with that, am I? You can watch that video if you want the full picture, but while the Mexican's extension has been the story dominating the news, it's taking away from the bigger picture at Red Bull and Visa Cash App only fans RB. And it's particularly strange as they're doing something that the company has never been known for and marks a potential shift in ideology that could cripple both teams in the long run. Allow me to explain. So the Perez news we all know about, and you've most likely heard a million takes from all the good F1 YouTubers and the Pit Stop boys, so what can I bring to the table? Well, it's Daniel Ricciardo. I mean, did you really expect any less from me? Now, I may be the biggest honey badger simp on the planet, but even I could admit that I don't think Daniel has done enough so far to deserve a Formula 1 seat anywhere on the grid for 2025. The start of the season was disappointing to say the least. Then, his great big return in China was thwarted by Air Canada here, and despite that P4 in the Miami Sprint, the Aussie has just gone back to being pegged by the Japanese. Even Ricardo has admitted this, not the pegging obviously, but in Monaco, he told the media that the contract talks were not his focus at this stage of the season, and instead it was getting said season back on track, or even just out of the pit lane. Not that a return to the main team was even remotely likely, Checo's two-year deal realistically locks down the second of the Red Bull fold spots for 2025. For the 963rd time, Max Verstappen is not going anywhere. Please God, don't let me be wrong on that now. Alongside Max and Sergio, though, you've got Yuki, Daniel and Liam Lawson, who of course stepped in for several Grand Prix in 2023 after Daniel wanked too much and broke his hand. No way, hang on, I just confused my scripts with my latest fan fiction. Despite performing bloody well in an Alpha Tauri that wasn't a great car by any means, Liam was passed up on a full-time drive for this year, but was supposedly guaranteed a seat for 2025. If you do the maths, that leaves Horner with five drivers competing for four seats, which doesn't add up, but that isn't much of a surprise prize, you're only meant to have one woman in your life and Christian allegedly had two. With the writing on the wall for Daniel, everyone is just waiting for Lawson to be announced alongside Yuki for the 2025 season, but apparently that might not be happening anymore. News articles in the last few days have implied that Ricardo's seat is actually a lot more safe than we initially thought. This all comes back to Horner being maybe even more of a Honey Badger fanboy than me, and with the Briton currently still clinging on in Red Bull Civil War, with his final say on the RB driver lineup, Daniel may still find himself on the grid for next season. Ricardo does, of course, carry a huge amount of marketability, and it's likely the reason the RB team name would score about a million points in Scrabble. But we've already begun to see some of that support wane in the first third of 2024, and that market value is pretty pointless if you can't do what you're actually being paid for on the track. Crikey, that hurts to write. Did I really just say crikey? With Lawson still promised to drive, where exactly does that leave poor Yuki Tsunoda then? The Japanese driver was one of the surprises of the season in 2024, using Daniel as a mop to wipe the floor with the Australian. At least Tsunoda's performances this year almost guarantee him a job in 2025, and the rumours in Monaco appear to place him at the top of Audi's wish list, provided they can't secure sites or Westerman Ocon. That's not really the top, is it? Now, in fairness, every driver and their dead nan has been at the top of Audi's wish list at some point in the last few months, but just thinking about it, pairing Yuki and Nico Hulkenberg could be one of the most underrated lineups of the grid next season. So it's Checo and Max at Red Bull, Lawson and Funny Man at RB, and then Japan starting with Germany again as Sonoda joins forces with Audi. Not the brightest move as far as Red Bull is concerned, but what exactly is the issue? Well, Red Bull are apparently set on dropping Sonoda, but don't want to release him. This all comes from journalist Joe Soward, who has a pretty good track record, I think, and came out recently claiming that Red Bull will force Yuki to be bought out, 
regardless if he's getting a drive for 2025 or not. Now, while Audi have a nice wad of cash in their back pocket and could well make this happen if they wanted to please the dwarf community bad enough, this feels a tad unfair from Yuki's perspective. He's not put a foot wrong this year, besides maybe on the brakes at the end of the Bahrain Grand Prix, yet despite that, his team won't even fathom him progressing to the main Red Bull outfit and then won't let him join a rival team even though they apparently have no intention of keeping him on at RB anyway. If this backfires and Sonoda is left in the gulag, then it could well be a massive shame for both Yuki and Formula 1 sport potentially losing a great talent down to greed rather than any fault of his own. The strangest bit about this for me is how it's potentially the most un-Red Bull way of handling the situation. Less than a year ago, Nick De Vries was being hung, drawn and quartered in front of the media just 10 races into his first full season of Formula 1. Cut to 2024 and RB are opting to stick with an underperforming pensioner, while Red Bull have potentially jeopardised the next two Constructors' Championships by retaining Perez. I get that we've spent years criticising the team for its cutthroat nature, but this complete 180, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this though. Is it good that Red Bull are finally appearing to change their ways, or are they in the process of throwing the team's continued success out of the window? Speak your thoughts in the comments below and have fun arguing down there. If you haven't noticed, I'm on a bit of a productive streak at the moment and have a ton of videos coming up, some of which are already available to my patrons and channel members in early access. If you, for whatever reason, want to hear even more from me then, or just want to support the channel further, head over to those links down below. Now, I'll be back very soon with another video, but until then, have a good one.